this branch of Platform 1 MRC uh, will cover a wide range of subjects. Actually, there's no limit on uh, the uh, subject matter. It's entirely up to me, it's my choice as to what is uh, put up on this particular part of the, uh, the site. So, uh, in saying that, I'm also open to suggestions. If anybody has uh, a subject they might like covered, I'll do my best to try and find out something about it and see if we can get it posted up here uh, for your entertainment. Um, in saying that the uh, subject matter is unrestricted, it also means that uh, some of the uh, Gourmet Shed uh, topics that will come up could be simply just running trains. So it's supposed to be a bit of an entertainment, something just a little different. So uh, just bear with us while we get it all bedded in and we'll see how we go. Right folks, here we are at uh, Gourmet's workbench here and uh, I've got a tile spacer. Yes, it's a tile spacer and from the look of it on the ruler there it's about uh, 20 mils across. So it's uh, just an El Cheapo bought at uh, a $2 shop or pound shop if you like and it's just your average common or garden uh, tile spacer. Now I've been using these as bell cranks. Now they're, they're pretty good because you can't kill these things with an axe. You know, I'm really sort of going to town on it here. It's sort of a, a nylon come plastic sort of material that can take a fair bit of uh, a hiding. Uh, so this is what I use as bell cranks. I mean they're, they're no good for scale replicas or anything like that. Um, but they're perfectly good for hidden areas or under the baseboard if you need to change the direction of um, a, a bit of wire or cable or something like that. So um, yeah, so that's what we're using and I'll, I'll show you how it's been applied on uh, my railway. Right folks, this is how um, they've been applied on my railway. Um, I have point motors sitting on uh, adapter plates besides the, the track and uh, in order to um, place them on a narrow um, piece of board there I've had to set the point motors off at uh, odd angles in some cases and therefore I need the bell crank uh, for a change of direction to um, activate the point motor. And you can see here as I zoom in that it's quite a simple setup. I've, um, I'll talk about the, the cables in a, in a moment but at the moment let's just have a look at the bell crank here or the tile spacer if you like, the modified tile spacer. So what we have here is that tile spacer that I couldn't kill with an axe. Um, now bearing in mind you can buy a bag of a couple of hundred of these for a couple of bucks so it doesn't matter if you muck it up when you're drilling these things or what and it doesn't matter if they fail in the first five years of use um, they're cheap, really really cheap. So this one here uh, all I did was I cut off the fourth arm with um, a pair of pliers, you know, no, no great care taken, just snipped it off and you might be able to just see it underneath the uh, bell crank there. I've used it as a spacer to raise it up off the board. And then all I've done is uh, used a, this was actually supposed to be a track pin, it's an American style thing with a flat head which is quite good for this application. However, a small flathead nail or a small flathead nail with a washer underneath would work. Um, the spacer doesn't necessarily have to be one arm of the um, bell crank. You could use washers under there to raise it up off the board so that it can move freely. And that's the key thing to it. Uh, if you're using uh, a flathead nail as the pivot point here, um, you have to be very careful when you tap it in that you don't tap it in too hard and restrict the movement of the bell crank. Right now when I drilled the hole for the uh, pin here, the pivot point, I used uh, a mini drill bit uh, in a pin vise and tried to match the size of the, um, the nail as closely as possible. It's a nice, uh, we won't say tight, but it's a firm fit in there, enough to allow free movement and the same sort of uh, concept applies to where I've fitted the wire through. This is um, 1.25 millimeter galvanized wire which uh, I've bought in rolls of 50 meters uh, for about seven bucks so again this is cheap 
you just need to snip it off and straighten it out and bend it and uh, all that sort of thing you know a little bit of work required but you know it's, it's just wire it doesn't really matter what wire you use as long as you drill the, the hole to suit the wire uh, now these bell cranks have been in uh, use for a good two years now and uh, it's quite um, I suppose a severe, a severe movement when um, the point mater throws it and uh, you can see that they've lasted quite well I'll try and zoom in a bit more oops going the wrong way we'll zoom in a bit more you can see there's a bit of a gap uh, on this lower one here you can see that there must be a bit of wear there uh, this one looks pretty good so as I say they cost practically nothing so who cares you know and a little bit of um, movement is not such a bad thing it sort of uh, uh, helps to relieve some of the um, pressure when it throws but um, I'll show you what it looks like I won't use the actual uh, electrical side of the uh, point motor I'll just do it by hand but you can see <coughs> excuse me that um, it's throwing my points via the cable you can also see on the left there that uh, red wheel is uh, a micro switch which is activated when the um, when the bell crank moves if I zoom back a little bit, am I going the right way? Yes, yes I am. There's a second micro switch there which is activated by uh, the uh, other arm of the bell crank. So, you know, it's doing a couple of jobs here. It's really good. This is a complicated arrangement uh, and it's all due to uh, space constraints. So, uh, everything there works fine and uh, has been doing so for the last couple of years as I've said before. Um, I think we should probably now move on to uh, a little discussion about the cable or the wire in the tube sort of effect that I have there. So we'll do that. Right, as I said I used um, 1.25 millimeter galvanized wire and that feeds through this uh, cable here uh, which is actually uh, used for curtains, for hanging temporary curtains. You buy it from the hardware store in uh, Oh, minimum I suppose of a meter length and um, it's it's a bit stretchy and uh, the idea is you screw an eyelet into each end and then uh, hang it up on the on the architrave on the window and uh, and away you go so it's like brake cable basically but the important thing is that when you're running this uh, gal wire through it that uh, in the main parts of the movement of the wire it's, it's essential that the wire doesn't really rub on the inside casing of the cable. You can see it's close there and if I move the bell crank it's gone back to the middle there so there's no restriction and this is what you have to watch when you're setting these things up that uh, you've got free movement all the way along the line. It's not too hard to, uh, to do but you've just got to be aware of it um, if you have, um, if you create friction in this um, cable here with the wire, well then it's going to impact all the way back to your point motor. It won't be able to throw the uh, the point effectively. So there you are. So in summary, folks, um, all you need is, is to get yourself a bag of uh, tile spacers. You, you may have some out in your shed if you look closely. Um, I remember someone saying to me quite some time ago when I first um, showed this topic on another forum that, uh, hey, I've got a bag of those sitting out in the shed. I didn't realise I could use them as uh, bell cranks. So you need some tile spaces. You need some sort of small flathead nail uh, and possibly some washers as spaces, both for the top and the bottom. Um, you may want to use forearm uh, bell cranks, you know, you can add another arm doing something out the scent. Um, you need some wire of a suitable gauge for whatever you're going to do and possibly you may need a carrier for the wire in effect uh, something like a brake cable whatever you can find. Um, I have also used um, what they use for clearing sewers, it's a, it's a um, like a, a 20 foot long brake cable thing with a a doover on the end of it and you shove it down the sewer to try and clear any blockages. That works out very cheap as well. And uh, some 
cable clips to hold the cable down if you're using cable. As I said earlier on, um, it depends what application you're using these for. You might use a heavier gauge wire and you may not need to have the, the cable to carry it. Uh, wire I've found over short lengths you won't get any, any bending in it when it's under pressure. Under compression is the, is the main thing. It, uh, nearly all wire is good when it's pulling but when it's under compression that's when it will bend. So you need to probably suck it and see I suppose. Uh, but I mean here's your starting point. Um, as I say a couple of hundred of them for a couple of dollars what's that? A cent each. You know compared to possibly four or five six dollars for one um, bell crank from the model shop so um, okay it's not the prettiest method but it's certainly the cheapest so there you go that's all I can tell you at the moment I, I think it's been informative I hope it has been informative we'll leave it at that okay okay folks to wrap up back to Gormo in the shed well folks that's it for segment one of Gourmet Shed on Platform 1 MRC. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, stay tuned for segment two. I have no idea what that will be, but uh, we'll just have to wait. And remember one thing. The hardest thing to do when you're building your model railway is laying that first piece of track. Cheers, Gourmet.